Good evening. Good evening and welcome to Angus the Monkey Show. Hello and welcome to Angus the Monkey's Arts Review. Listen, at the end of the day, did he or did he not do this fairy tale you're telling me about? Aeon. Aeon is a Star Wars fairy tale, isn't it? And the songs are just beautiful, the music's beautiful. Oh, these guys made such a brilliant job of it. Oh, they really, really did. Aye, so Aeon, check this out. At this time, Lord Thora, there are eight uprisings in the Empire, isolated, yet the potential for a joint and open conflict does increase with the passing of each decand. And Earth, the home of all our ancient worry. Is it suggested, Councillor Rian, that perhaps some catastrophe befall this barren rock? Yes, Lord Thora, that is my thought. Let us dispense with the niceties, Rian. I have for some time been searching for a planet of suitable mass for the race of the Zala to people. Now, the next one from Outshore is, well, Angus has discovered a wee cracker of a show called A Farewell to Dawn, didn't you? He was telling me about it. Listen, it's something about the epic story of the Celts from the ancient dawn of time through the oceans of, of it's always sailing west. The Celts are always sailing westward, aren't they? So westward, and then they sort of sail westward off the lip of the earth into space. Not obviously there's a flat earth or anything like that, but just sail westward, then they head off into space. But before they get from A to B, there's all sorts of stuff that gets in the way, you know, like history and wars and battles and all sorts of weird stuff goes on in history, doesn't it? A farewell to dawn. Check this out. And now our kin, their only sin and need for loaf of bread, have by tyrants been betrayed and ocean is their bed. Those slaves who live through transportation have in time prepared a nation, though an isle of mist is in our mind. Departed from our parent kind. Some to cities, grimy mills, others dying in the hills of a distant land. Now our isle begins to build, and terror falls upon the skilled, for they are put in prison. The locks and chains given for their pains, a pittance which their family gains to buy the cloth which in turn pays for the profit of those far off days. The owner buys a ship. And there in port, majestic clipper moored beside a factory key. That takes the cloth and iron goods, crashing through the silver spray to far off heathen lands. And to its crew comes a commotion, sighted now a rocky ocean, howling wind and tearing sail. God let not the rudder fail. Ships are sailing, blow the horn. Why the anger? Why forlorn? The ocean draws us near. There's an ancient prophecy from the Brand Seer in the 17th century, as Rome was, London is, and Edinburgh shall be. And of course, like Edinburgh, the coming of uh, uh, the prominence and dominance and global geo-dominance of Edinburgh. 
I don't know, what did they, they discover oil under the under the North Sea or something? I have no idea what that, that was all about, really. I have no idea. At the end of the day, though, Brand Seer prophecy and all these secret societies are all going, shh, don't tell anybody. Shh, shh, shh. And then you've got the weird theories that tie in Jerusalem and kind of, kind of anti-Christian fairy tales are all woven into this as a Merovingian conspiracy, the lost tribe of whatever. The lost tribe of whatever is a very dangerous one. Every, you come across the lost tribe of whatever, you're... Nah. So there's the lost tribe of whatever. Either it's, either it's Benjamin or it's Dan or it's whatever. You know, so. The sheer weight of circumstantial evidence points to the astounding truth. Events which will happen in Edinburgh within the next 10 years will shape the final destiny of mankind on this planet. For me, the story begins in 1980, in Edinburgh, Scotland. For others, there is a much more ancient reality behind Edinburgh and the Lothians. Dark secrets, arcane bloodlines, and a procession of alien beings and Scottish thrones receding into the mists of time, to the fabled remains of Atlantis, and the Watchers, whose magical powers have stretched across the aeons. Now in this roundup by Outshore, last but by no means least, you've got the DVD, the forthcoming DVD called High Strangeness in Gorebridge. High Strangeness, J. Allen Hynek, in his speech to the United Nations, says, check this out, boys and girls, the aliens are doing strange stuff. Or you can, you know, you obviously can Google J. Allen Hynek's High Strangeness references and big speech he made to the UN saying things that are going on with UFOs are very, very weird. People should pay attention because it really is interfering and making people feel disorientated with this nonsense. Some of it quite malevolent nonsense as well. 